All right, so in the last video, I introduced this budget upgrade series and laid out some of the upgrades I'm planning for my wife's 2021 Specialized Rockhopper Sport 29. Now I mentioned that the first upgrade I wanted to knock out was converting the stock tubed tire rim combo to a nice plush tubeless setup. Now the primary things we need for this upgrade are tubeless tires, rim tape, tubeless valves, and of course, tubeless sealant. The tires I'm using here are the Hutchinson Kraken Trail tires in 29 by 2.3. I got them on a ridiculous deal for something like 30 bucks a piece, marked down from 80. Now, I'm not really sure why these are going for so cheap right now, but the reviews are decent and they fit the bill, so we're gonna give them a try. Anyways, after you deflate the stock tire and break the tire bead by pressing the tire sidewalls toward the center of the rim, a tire lever will help you to remove the stock tube and tire. You'll also need to remove the stock rim strip, which only serves as a barrier between the inner tube and the sometimes sharp edges of the spoke holes. You wanna make sure not to confuse the rim strip with tubeless tape, as a rim strip won't be sufficient to create an airtight seal required by tubeless tires. Clean the bare rim with some alcohol and you're basically ready to move on. Now it's really important to remember that when converting to a tubeless setup, it's more important that the tire be tubeless compatible than the rim. Now in theory, any rim can be modified to except tubeless tires, but not every tire can or should be run tubeless. Now tubeless specific tires have a stiffer bead that's far less susceptible to stretching, and so the chances of a blow off are far lower. Now the rim on the other hand only needs to create an airtight seal at the bead interface and seal up any spoke and valve holes at the same time. Now if your rim isn't tubeless ready, it can pretty easily be converted to tubeless by taping up all the spoke holes and the valve holes with a single continuous adhesive tape liner. This liner of course is called tubeless tape and many brands offer their own version. Now for this conversion, I'm using Stan's No Tubes rim tape, but the real key here is to get the width of the tubeless tape right. Now to do this, you'll wanna measure the inner width of your rim, then use a tubeless rim tape that's about five to six millimeters wider than that. The reason for needing a wider tape than your rim is that you actually want the tape to creep up the sides of the rim walls a bit to aid in creating that airtight seal with the tire bead. You wanna pull it taut as you go, which will allow the center of the tape to lie flat, while allowing the edges of the tape to creep up the sides of the rim wall. You wanna make sure that the tape is centered so that the tape rides up both sides of the rim wall equally. Take your time and don't rush this part and make sure to overlap the valve hole at the start and at the finish by a few inches before cutting the tape. Now once you're done taping, use a tire lever or something similar to really press the rim tape into the corners of the rim bed. Now you can also try to press the center of the tape strip down into the center channel of the rim, but it might not be possible if the center channel on the rim is too deep. And that's totally fine if this isn't pressed all the way down as the air tightness of the rim is really only dependent on the tape to tire bead interface. Now once your tape job looks good, use a small screwdriver or something similar to poke a very small hole in the tape at the valve hole. I don't recommend anything flat or cutting an X shape into the tape with a razor as these elongated slits can easily propagate and ruin your airtight seal. Now once you have a small pilot hole in the tape, you wanna go ahead and push the tubeless valve all the way through to create the proper size hole, and then tighten the lock nut down on the other side. I should also note that I converted this rim, which is drilled with a larger diameter Schrader valve to a Presta valve. Now the fear here is that the skinny Presta valve might somehow be able to slip through the larger Schrader sized hole and ruin your tubeless setup. Now personally, I didn't use any adapters to modify the rim hole diameter and thankfully it works just fine. Now once your tubeless valves are installed, you're basically ready to mount the tire. You wanna make sure you get the direction of the tire right the first time if you do have directional tires and if you wanna be a pro about it, you'll also wanna line up the tire labels with the valves. Now I understand this is totally unnecessary from a performance standpoint, but it's absolutely necessary from a don't aggravate your OCD standpoint. Now, once your tire is mounted, you have several inflation options. You can try a normal floor pump to seat the bead, but there's no guarantee that you'll actually be able to pump fast enough to seat the bead. Now on the other end of the spectrum, an air compressor is basically a foolproof method and you can blast essentially an unlimited volume of air into the tire to get it seated. Now the only problem with that for me is that air compressors are loud while pressurizing. And if you didn't already know, I do pretty much all my bike sauce related stuff after my two and five year old kids are asleep, like right there. So an air compressor is just kind of off limits for me. So the Goldilocks option in my opinion is something called a boost pump, which is like a standard floor pump, but has a bypass valve that allows you to divert air from the hose into a pressure vessel on the side. If you think about it, it's basically just a manual compressor that you have to hand pressurize up to 160 PSI. Then with the flick of a wrist, you can release all that air at once into the tire, 
much like a traditional compressor. Now, in addition to these three inflation options, you also have a choice as to when to add the liquid tire sealant. Now, for me, I prefer to inflate and set the tire bead dry with no sealant at all. Then deflate the tire, now with the tire bead firmly in place, remove the valve core and add the sealant through the valve. A tool like this one from KOM Sports on Amazon is purpose built for this as it links a syringe to a skinny but rigid tube that feeds directly into the valve and into your tire. Now once you insert the desired amount of sealant, which for these tires is about three ounces, you can simply reinstall the valve core and pump it up as you normally would. Now sure this method does take a little bit longer, but in my opinion, it's far less risky and it's certainly more methodical, which for better or worse is just my style. Now regardless of how you've added sealant and inflated the tire, you'll still have to do the obligatory sealant dance to distribute all that sealant around the inside of the tire and rim surface. Now if you have time it's always best to ride the bike around for a few minutes to help the bead set and to distribute the sealant around a bit more. Then ideally you'd pump your tires up to a predetermined pressure, leave them overnight, and then check the pressures the following day to get a sense for how well they hold air. Alright so the first upgrade on the 2021 Rock Hopper is done. The tires feel great and they do make a big difference especially on a hardtail where the rear suspension is 100% due to tire deformation. And to use the adopted lingo, these tubeless tires are way more supple than the stiff tubed tire setup, which noticeably improves the ride feel. Now I have to say I'm pretty happy with this upgrade and how smoothly it went. And I certainly think it's a worthwhile upgrade on basically any bike, and I really wish this would have come tubeless from the factory. But then again, stock tubeless tire setups are generally reserved for higher end bikes. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful, and I'd love to hear down in the comments how your own tubeless conversion projects have gone in the past, or if you have any questions about this one, feel free to ask below. Now, if you're interested, you can also check out the other videos in this specialized Rock Hopper upgrade series in this playlist over here. Thanks again for watching, and thanks again for subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.